I hope you were able to understand the difference, basic difference between working stress method and limit state method. I have like eight problems for you guys, which will help you understand the concept even better. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So first starting with this question, find the permissible tensile stress in FE 250 bar in working stress method. So they have asked in working stress method. So I have only a partial safety factor. I mean, I have only factor of safety for my materials. I don't have factor of safety for uh, loads and all. So material and have given steel. Fe 250 is my steel. So it is 250. And what is the material factor of safety for steel? It is 1.8. And in material factor of safety, we reduce its we will reduce its uh, carrying capacity. So it is 250 divided by 1.8 will be my permissible tensile stress, which will give me. One thirty eight point eight nine. I can say it is one thirty nine MPa. So this is my answer. I want you guys to solve for Fe four one five and comment the answers below. Don't be afraid. I have already pinned the answers. Just give it a try and check whether your answers are correct. Next is as per limit state method. What is the highest value of strain possible in concrete? So we have discussed this point already in this lecture and if you don't know the answer I will give you a clue. Based on this assumption only we will find the permissible stresses in limit state method. So what is that assumption we made and if you know that assumption if you can recall that assumption then you can find the answer for this one. I want you guys to try it and comment the answers below. Next is in limit state method the partial factor of safety for steel is what? In limit state method I have two things. I have limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. And in limit state of collapse the partial safety factor for steel is 1.15. For serviceability it is 1.0. So I have both the options here. So in this case when you have both the options go with the limit state of collapses partial safety factor. because next question is the partial safety factor for concrete as per IS 456-2000. So I think you guys can answer this. It is partial safety factor for concrete. I think you guys can answer it. Come in the answers down below. Next question is in limit state method the partial safety factor applied for steel and concrete for serviceability are. I want you guys to underline and give importance to this word. So they have asked for serviceability. So don't blindly answer for collapse because most of the time uh, we only look for collapse but remember it has been asked for serviceability. So comment the answers below. I'm sure you guys know the answer for this. Next we have this question. This is a quite tricky one. So they have given dead load moment, live load moments, wind load and earthquake load. This is earthquake load. They have given all the moments and they have asked to find the design moment for limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. So now they have given the loads and for the given load you have to find the design moment which means you have to go back to the table. Now in the table we have three load combination we have dead load plus live load, dead load plus wind load, dead load, live load and wind load. Now we can see that they have given dead load, live load and wind load also. So we have to look into the third category. Where for limit state of collapse, limit state of collapse, it is 1.2 into all the three things. Whereas in uh, limit state of serviceability, it is 1.0 into dead load plus 0.8 into other two loads. Now the tricky part is we have both wind load and earthquake load and in our table we have only wind load. So in this case what IS 456 says is uh, wind load, earthquake load, they are they both are not going to occur simultaneously. It, it is very very rare. The probability of them occurring together is very very rare. So in this case wind load and earthquake load. IS 456 suggests that we should take the higher load that will give the higher amount of design moment. So here the higher the moment is given by earthquake load. So I am going to take earthquake load here. So for limit state method of collapse it is going to be 15. I am going to consider dive load, dead load, live load 
and earthquake load. I am not going to consider my wind load. So it is 15 plus 19 plus 40. Whereas for here it is uh, again uh, 0.8 into live load plus earthquake load only. So this will become 1 into my dead load is 15 plus 0.8 into 19 plus 40. This will give me an answer of 89 and this will give me an answer of 62 kilonewton meter. So I can say that my answer is option C. So coming to the next question. The RCC structure is subjected to dead load of so and so and live load of so and so. Design load for the limit state of collapse is what? So again they have asked for design load and here look at the load combination. It is dead load plus live load and they have asked only for collapse. Serviceability is not asked. So I am sure you can recall the table and find what is the answer for this. And I want you to solve it and comment the answers below. So I hope this video was very useful and you understood the concepts of limit state method and working stress method at least the basics well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.